Hello and welcome back. So I'm sure we've all taken pictures of the night sky and seen all those faint and fuzzy galaxies in the background. But it made me start to think, I wonder if I've captured something such as a comet or an asteroid that I wasn't expecting to be in the field of view. So I started doing some digging around and I found there's a really nice feature in PixInsight, which this video is going to take you through setting up and showing you some of those mainly asteroids that are almost certainly in a lot of your images. Did I find an asteroid that we could see? Well, stay tuned. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So before we begin, we need to download some files from the PixInsight website. So if you go to PixInsight.com, log into the, your account, and you'll go to the downloads area where you'd normally pick up the latest version of the full version of PixInsight once you've purchased it. You'll notice there's some database files. So the first that we need to scroll down to is, is the Gaia EDR3 section. And if we expand that out, I just took the first three of these. You can probably get away with just the first one based on the magnitude of stars that are in this catalog. I took the first three, download those and store them into a folder that you can remember later on. So in this example, I stored mine into a folder called PI Gaia. We then need in the next section, these asteroid files. Now these files, there are 10 of and you need all of these, but they're rel relatively small in size, only 83 meg. So again, I've downloaded these already and I've stored them into a folder on my PC called PI Asteroids. Once you've done that, so we're now inside PixInsight. One of the things that this process needs to work is some data to be written inside the FITS header. Now all popular programs such as SGP, Nina, APT and the ASAA should write this information, but we'll just double check. So open any image, so I've opened one here, and then go to File, FITS Header. The information that we need is the date and time that the picture was taken, the focal length of your telescope, and the RA and DEC coordinates. I'll be very surprised if any of those programs don't write that information. The, this information on here was taken with Nina, and as you can see, the data's present. So just check that. Now don't close this file, we're going to need it for this next part of the setup. So under processors, go to all processors and Gaia, I think that's how you pronounce it. And make sure that the data release is Gaia EDR3 and then press the spanner icon down in the bottom right hand side. Now press select and browse to the folder where you downloaded those Gaia files. If you remember, I downloaded mine to a folder called PI Gaia these are the three files so just select all those and press OK these now appear in this list and just press OK and then you can just close this window down next we need to go to script and image analysis and image solver when this comes up we basically need to go down to model parameters and change this from automatic catalog to local XPDS server and pick from the list Gaia EDR3. Now we're gonna to have to press OK on this and this is why you need an active picture open. And just press OK. It will play itself this image but we have to do this just to change that setting. We only need to change this setting once. But I'll fast forward the video because this will take a couple of seconds. So the final part of the setup process is we need to go to script, render and annotate image. When this dialog pops up, these are the elements that are used to annotate an, an image. And you'll notice there is a section in there called asteroids, but this has got a very, very limited amount of asteroids. So this is now where we're going to add those 10 files that we downloaded. So we press the plus sign here, and then from this list, we pick custom exph files and press OK. Now it's slightly odd this, it lets you put three in. So we're gonna to have to do this four times. So in this section, we just browse and we pick our folder and our first file that we downloaded out of those 10. We pick the second option, we pick the second file and we pick the third option and we pick the third file. We then press plus and we need to now add another set of these custom EHPH files. And again, this will be file number four. I think you get the idea, so I'll just finish this off and fast forward the video. So once you've got those four custom file entries set with the 10 asteroid files, 
The next bit is purely optional, but I think it makes the annotation a little bit easier to understand and read. So I changed the color of the annotation to a lime green and increase the font size. And the way you do this is you could click on the first custom entry, change the color and change the font. And you have to do that for each of these. Now, when I press OK, it's going to save these settings so they'll always be there. And we don't need to do this bit again, but it's also going to do our first annotation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let it go through, but I'm going to close the image and go through the process of how we now use this to find asteroids in our images. OK, that's annotated our first image with asteroids, but I'm going to close it because I want to go through the process from start to finish now. Effectively, this was the setup stage, but we had to execute some of those processes to allow us to save that configuration. So I'm going to close this down and I'm going to open a brand new image, which is of the Rosette Nebula. I'm going to stretch it. So if I wanted to find out if there's an asteroid or asteroids in this field of view, the first thing we need to do is we go to script, image analysis, image solver. Make sure that what we set earlier is still set, which is the Gaia ED3 and press OK. This will take a few seconds. It doesn't change your image, but it puts into memory and changes the fits header for stuff that we need for this next stage of annotation. You'll see what that means in a second, but nothing's actually changing in your images. Okay, so once the image solver's done, that's effectively done a plate solve using that EDR3 catalog that we downloaded earlier. Now for the magic, we go to script, render, and annotate image. And as long as these four custom files that we entered earlier are in, and I've got mine set to be lime green, I'm gonna press okay. And what it's doing now is over in the runtime window, you'll see that it says it's searching those files. Wherever it says visual, visual, uh, visual, visible bodies, these are asteroids that it's found in this field of view. I've picked this one on purpose because there's a lot. However, a lot of them are very, very dim. So it will show you now in the annotated image, all these green areas here are asteroids but it's also showing you the magnitude of the object. Now, anything with a magnitude, certainly for my resolving power, so if I go into this one, in the middle of that cross, it's basically saying there was an asteroid of magnitude 19. You can clearly see there's nothing there. That's because I can't resolve an, the 19th magnitude object. So, here's the disappointment bit. You're going to get a lot of these, and I can tell you now, I've been through quite a number of my images, including this one several times. And each of these asteroids that it's found, as we zoom in and have a look, there's nothing there. And that's because it's not not there, it's just because I can't resolve it. So, did I find any asteroids? Well, yes, I did. And I was quite surprised at what I found. So let me fast forward the video and we'll get on to where I found some asteroids in some of my images. Okay, let me show you what I found. So as I went back through my data, which took quite a long time, I went back into some data I took in 2020. I'll just open one of these. So this is a picture of the Leo triplet taken in April 2020. So I'm going to go through the same process. I'm going to solve the image using the EDR3 catalog. And then I'm going to annotate the image. See what asteroids are in this field of view. This took me about three hours to get to this. I was literally going through all my data sets. And as you can see, it's finding a lot of asteroids. A hell of a lot of asteroids. So, I noticed that there was some magnitude 16 ones, which are the ones that are actually visible. So, if we zoom in here, we can see there is some illuminated pixels against 2020 Yukoko. 
and almost in the same vicinity we have another one here so what I then did was just so we can see the wood for the trees I closed down the annotated version and I went to annotate image again but this time when I clicked on these I put a magnitude filter of between 1 and 17 and unfortunately you've got to do that on each of these so that will filter out all of those ones that we can't see and we'll leave the two that we can off it goes again so you can see this time the data is far less over here and there we go we're left with our two magnitude 16 asteroids so the next thing I thought I wonder if I can see them on a blink test so let's minimize these out the way and we'll go do a blink I've actually got the files already loaded in, in here so I'm going to play them and I'm going to zoom into the image I'll just keep it going around on a quite a fast loop so hopefully if you'll see that I'm dithering these frames as well if I get into the area there we go this guy here I'll try and zoom in on the video I'll put some things around it so there's the first one so you can see it moving through space so where's the second one it was over to the left over here somewhere he was slightly dimmer there he is so there's the second one the reason the uh, stars are moving around as I say is because I did a bit that is staying on a fixed thing so if we go out slightly you probably can't see them but yeah so I spent three hours looking for asteroids found none then I literally found two from the same set of subs taken on the same night so as ever I hope you've enjoyed this video a bit of fun um, don't waste too much time asteroid hunting but if you do please please do let me know how you get on and uh, if you want to give me a like or a subscribe I'll be ever grateful so until next time clear skies everybody bye bye